Hi, today I'm going to talk about how you can incorporate temperature dependence in your finite element simulation, particularly when it comes to the material model response. Clearly, all materials change their behavior with temperature, and this is particularly true for polymer materials like rubbers and thermoplastics. And the, there are two ways in which you can do this. One is to do a linear interpolation of the parameters based on temperature, and the other way is to use equations for describing how the parameters change with temperature. But which of these methods is best and which one should you use? That's what we'll focus on here today. I'll start with method one, where you basically calibrate a material model for each temperature that you're interested in, and then you somehow interpolate these sets of parameters between the different temperatures. And as an example, here is uh, some data for, uh, for a material, there's Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio at two different temperatures. And uh, if you plot the data, you have two data points, and you can simply assume that it's a linear dependence between these points. And uh, the properties will be stay the same outside the range of data that's available. So this very simple linear interpolation approach works if the material model is very simple. There is really, really no doubt about it. And remember, you can use as many linear little segments as you want. It doesn't have to be two. You can have a large number of these as well. So that's, uh, in essence, what you do for simple material models. But if you have a more advanced material, so here's an example that I will talk about in this video. This is a thermoplastic called PETG. And uh, I have compression data, uniaxial compression data for this material at 25 degrees C and 60 degrees C. And you can see the solid lines here are the experimental data. And then what I did was I calibrated a polyumod TNV material model. So this is one of the material models that is really accurate for all kinds of thermoplastics. And I tend to talk about it because it's so accurate. And here you can see that I can calibrate this material model to these two uh, temperatures, and I get pretty good fit to the data in each case. So this is just calibration using our M calibration software. Now, if you look at the results very carefully, you will see some complications. If you look at the, the stress strain curves, the higher the temperature, typically the lower the response, the stress, and that's also the case here. But when you look at some of these parameters, that uh, this is a three network, uh, TNV model, and you can see of the parameters here. And in fact, some of the parameters, some of the modulus parameters specifically, are higher, the values are higher at 60 degrees C than at 25 degrees C. Uh, but the stress strain prediction in the end tend to be lower. So this is interesting, right? You, if you just blindly calibrate an advanced material model, you can get results, parameters that are surprising. Another, fact that you can see here is that the, the low temperature, I get tau hat, the sort of the yield stress value to be a little bit lower than this one. A little surprising too. And specifically, it's interesting to see that the M parameters, MI and MF here, are also different. So is it really safe to do this? Um, well, it can be a little dangerous. When I say the word dangerous here is that what the, the, the interpolation will do is it will basically linearly interpolate each parameter based on temperature. And these two calibrations should be somewhat similar for this to work in a robust way. So be very careful if you approach this problem using a specific material for each temperature and then simply interpolate the parameters. So to summarize, the most finite element solvers support this linear interpolation approach. But there are some exceptions. Uh, one clear example is Abacus does not allow this linear interpolation of parameters for use in material models. Specifically, the polyumod library can't do this then. So you can't specify a polyumod material model at one set of parameters, at one temperature, and then another at a different temperature, and then have Abacus interpolate the parameters. It doesn't work. Abacus does not allow that. So to overcome this, we have here created a specific model in the PolyU mod library called the multi-temperature material model that basically does exactly that. You give this multi-temperature model framework in PolyU mod a set of parameters for each temperature and PolyU mod will interpolate and then call the actual PolyU mod material model to overcome this limitation that's available that's in Abacus, but also in some of the other finite element simulations. I will show some examples now 
how this works specifically. So this is an example in ANSYS. What ANSYS does really well, and I really like this, that ANSYS does this interpolation of parameters very quickly and easily for you. So here is an example. I'm going to actually open up a workbench. So here's a workbench of a problem I'm interested in, but the, the focus I'm here I'm doing initially is to see, I pasted in these commands here for the material model, and I specified TB temp 25. So I calibrated these parameters here using M calibration, and I simply say TB temp 25, so that's the parameters at that temperature, and then I have another set of parameters at TB60. So it's a very clean, it's a very nice way that ANSYS handles this kind of problem. What I then did was I used the calibrated material model that I showed before. For each temperature, I ran a, temp, a, 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 a simple simulation in ANSYS. I took this dog bone shaped specimen, I pulled it out a little bit, and to see what happens. And it's a very quick and easy simulation to perform. And I repeated it at three different temperatures in ANSYS without changing the material model. And I get these results. So we see that, yeah, the material in this case, the PETG material that I've talked about, uh, undergoes necking significantly here, and uh, we see that the stress is, goes down with temperature as it should, and so this is a quick check that this uh, makes sense. Uh, another way to demonstrate this is to do the same thing, but instead of using ANSYS to interpolate the parameters, I can use the PolyU mod multi temperature model framework. And this is described in more detail in chapter 27 of our PolyU mod manual if you want to read more about it, but you basically specify the parameters at each temperature. You can also, if you're interested, calibrate a multi-temperature uh, polyumon model using M calibration. Uh, you can combine them together using a template, and that's also demonstrated in this little slide here. Uh, you can calibrate them typically one temperature at a time and then combine them, but you can also use this framework, which is sometimes uh, easier. It sort of depends on the situation. And then you can calibrate it, and here are some results from this multi-temperature uh, TMV model, where for, at each temperature I used a, this TMV model that is shown here. And I get good predictions at multiple temperature in M calibration. We can then export this into ANSYS uh, and just paste it in as an APDL snippet. And here are the results if I simulate this test case again that I used earlier at three different temperatures. And again, the results look somewhat similar. I will show that in the end of the presentation here, the actual values and compare them. The, the second approach to doing this I talked about is using equation-based models. Instead of linearly interpolating parameters, you can also do this using equations. The problem here is that most finite element programs don't have material models that have equations for how the properties, how, how the response, in essence, should change with temperature. One exception is the WLF and Arrhenius type time temperature superposition ideas. They're equations for how the properties change with temperature. Uh, but most other models don't have that. PolyU mod in our library, we have uh, incorporated this as well. We have some uh, material models that have linear temperature dependence, but we also have more advanced equation based uh, temperature dependence. So the bottom e equation here is a 10H uh, temperature dependence equation that I typically use when I simulate thermoplastics close to the glass transition temperature, we have a very rapid and, and, and interesting temperature dependent response. And this equation was developed to capture that response. So it's a discrete number of parameters that control how the temperature influences the, the response of the material itself. So you don't have to calibrate them all for each temperature, you calibrate the equation that controls that. So that's the main difference there. So I can use that type of approach here. In my example, I'm simply going to use a linear temperature dependence equation in the TMV model. So I have only one set of parameters, but some of the parts of this model are now temperature dependence uh, based on this equation that I selected. I calibrate it all together, and I get a good fit to the data again. I can then simulate this in ANSYS. Just plug in this uh, TMV model with equation-based temperature dependence. And I get the results like this uh, at the three different temperatures that I studied earlier. So to summarize, if we compare these three methods that I talked about, ANSYS linear interpolation, the polyumod multi-temp interpolation, and the polyumod equation-based model, 
we see that for three different temperatures, we have exact calibration at uh, 25 C and at 60 C, and 40 is an in-between temperature. You see that three methods actually are relatively similar in this case, and that's good news. We wouldn't want to see a big difference here. But there is a difference. It's, uh, the biggest change is perhaps around here in the middle temperature where we have interpolated the results, either by parameter or by the equation. I don't know what the true value should be at 40, but we can see there is, is a somewhat diff big difference, about 10% difference in the magnitude of the maximum stress. So this is the maximum stress values in megapascals. So to summarize all of this, linear interpolation of parameters is very easy to use when it's available. Maybe that would be the, model, the method I would use uh, if, if I had to, because it's so easy to use. Uh, but it can be very tricky to use if you're not careful. You don't want to have parameters that vary widely between different temperatures. Of course, the parameters are interpolated, and that can cause problems if you're not careful. Equation-based temperature dependence models is a little bit more safe. But it's not always so easy to do because you have to use basically use the material models for it. The Polymod library has some choices here that can be very powerful when used properly. And uh, that's how I would attack these kinds of problems when they have a temperature-dependent material model. If you have any questions about any of this, you can ask them below.